ready? Y'all get ready? Yes, you get Y'all ready. Shout out to all my tea sippers out there. We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your teacups ready because you already know this tea is what? Piping hot. Hey, you guys. I hope you guys are doing good today. So I'm getting ready to go out of town here. So I'm up packing, getting things together before I end up going to the airport. But I want to go ahead and give you guys some tea before I get on the plane and get situated um, where I'm going. So anyhow, what's going down is I want to do another update on the whole Jussie Smollett situation. And if you're not following me on Instagram, again, make sure you follow me at lovely T 2002 because we've been spilling tea over there all day. So um, it's been a lot of stuff. A lot of celebrities are weighing in. We still have not heard anything from the damn cast of Empire. We haven't heard anything from Lee Scamuels, from Yaz, from the guy that plays Andre. You know, Taraji's been quiet. Lucius Lyons ain't said shit. So, but other people are speaking. And I was able to find that Ava DuVernay tweet that you guys were talking about yesterday in the live stream. So um, this is what Ava DuVernay was saying. She says, despite the inconsistencies, I can't blindly believe Chicago PD. That department covered up shooting Laquan McDaniel over a dozen times and operated an off-site torture facility. That one, I'll wait. Whatever the outcome, this won't stop me from believing others. I can't. So after she wrote that, somebody kind of confronted her and they said, Sister, I respect all that you do for our people and just who you are, but this case was fishy from the start. What famous person goes out in sub-zero weather at 2 a.m. for a subway alone, then wore the rope around his neck back to the hotel and, and walked past the guard at the hotel? Ava says, yes, sir, I hear you, and I agree. I wrote that there are inconsistencies. He might have lied. He might not have. I don't know, but what do I know? I never believe police on general principle just because they say so. My experience, our history makes it impossible for me to do so. So that is what Ava DuVernay is saying, and to me, it sounds like a bunch of mush mouth bullshit um, to compare, you know, what Jesse Smollett is being accused of doing to the Laquan McDonald shooting and cover-up. To me, that's apples to oranges. So now, moving away from Ava DuVernay and what she had to say, um, on top of that, little Boosie had something to say earlier today. And basically, he ended up getting drugged, and then he came back and changed his whole caption. This entire situation was a hot damn mess. Go ahead and check out what Lil Bootsy had to say right here. All right, so you guys just saw Little Bootsy's Instagram post that went viral earlier today, and you guys saw the updated information as well. So now on top of that, Cardi B is also speaking out about the situation, and basically, you know, she's saying that if he lied, that's fucked up. He fucked it up for Black History Month, but then she's also on the fence that, you know, maybe the Chicago police might have lied because she's heard that they're really, you know, racist and they might be trying to frame him. I want you guys to go ahead and check out what Cardi B had to say. Check this out and I'm going to come back with the rest of my commentary. I'm really disappointed in him. I feel like he fucked up Black History Month, bro. Like, damn. I'm not going to say yet until he said out his mouth that it was that it was fake and this shit was staged. I don't want to completely um, blame him because, you know, like somebody that I was talking to, they said like, you know, police in Chicago are racist. So they might probably try to frame him and make him look like he's a liar. But if he's not. Then, bro, you fucked up, for real. Like, why would you do that? Like, you ain't had to do that. Then you gave fucking Donald Trump immunity to fucking laugh at niggas and shit. You make motherfuckers look bad. Shit brazy, bro. All right, so you guys just saw what Cardi B had to say about the gay Tupac. I'm the gay Tupac. 
And basically, you know, she's kind of on the fence. And to me, I just feel like she's trying to play semantics. She's trying to, you know, she doesn't want to throw him under the bus. In the event, some stuff comes out that there's corruption. She doesn't want to anger certain fans. She doesn't want to anger certain people. And I think that her and a lot of celebrities are walking this fine line. Y'all know me. I don't give two shits. I'm not buying the story. There is no fine line with me. There's been too much evidence already proven that this man has lied several times, okay? Okay. He lied. Y'all niggas worship him. He fucking lied. Is there corruption with the Chicago PD? Yes. Is there racism? Yes. But at the end of the day, let's call a spade a spade, okay? This man's story has not checked out from the beginning. There's been so many inconsistencies, so much evidence coming out, and also the two brothers that he knew that were involved are singing like damn canaries. And this situation is getting very serious because they're saying that Jesse is basically behind that letter that was mailed to Empire a few days before his attack. And they're saying that when he sent that out because the letter didn't really cause the attention that he wanted, it didn't cause a lot of fanfare, it basically got brushed under the rug that's when he decided to come out with this whole attack scenario to get more attention. So Tonight, a stunning claim about a possible motive from the two men who told police Jussie Smollett hired them to stage a hate crime. A law enforcement source tells ABC News the brothers told police the actor was upset. A threatening letter sent to the studio that produces the show Empire did not get enough attention. And so they say he staged the attack a week later. And you did mention it to the police right away Absolutely. about the letter. Absolutely. Um, just because on the letter it had a stick figure hanging from a tree with a gun pointing towards it. With the words that said, small at Jussie, you will die black. There was no address, but the return address said in big red, you know, like caps, MAGA. Did I make that up too? Detectives are actively investigating the brother's allegation, but have not confirmed it to be true. Tonight, the two men who were identified from this grainy surveillance video breaking their silence, telling Chicago's WBBM, we are not racist, we are not homophobic, and we are not anti-Trump. We were born and raised in Chicago and are American citizens. Police seizing the two's computers and cell phones from their home, but Smollett not turning over his phone to police. They wanted me to give my phone to the tech for three to four hours. I'm sorry, but I'm not going to do that. Why? Because I have private pictures and videos and numbers, my partner's number, my family's number. Police now urgently want to talk to Smollett. So in my personal opinion, the fact that he would go through with, you know, putting together this letter and trying to make it look like there was anthrax, and then when they went and they tested it, it came back as Tylenol. You know, at this point, I'm looking at this dude like he's a sociopath. I've been seeing a lot of people writing that, and from what a lot of people are writing and from what I research, he's definitely fitting the profile, okay? Because this is just not normal behavior. You know, it's one thing to lie, it's one thing to want attention, but to go to these extremes, this is really disheartening. That's why I say I feel like there's more people involved than just Jussie, okay? So now, if that's not crazy enough, the police are acting to re-interview him, and at this point in time, Jussie's supposedly refusing, he's not wanting to come down for questioning, so they are going to move forward with the grand jury investigation. I want you guys to go ahead and watch this news clip, and I'm going to come back with the rest of my comments. Chicago police want to re interview Empire actor Jesse Smollett after getting new information about the alleged attack against him. Sources tell CBS News two brothers told police Smollett paid them to stage the attack. The actor's attorneys say he is being further victimized by these claims. Dean Reynolds is at Chicago Police Headquarters. Dean, good morning. Good morning. Smollett's team tells us uh, that they don't know of any date yet for that follow-up interview, but they want to, the police want to measure what Smollett says versus the accounts of those two Nigerian brothers. And they're also interested in any banking and communication records. I think that what people need to hear is just the truth. But now the truth about what happened to Jussie Smollett is once again under a harsh spotlight. After sources say two brothers initially brought in for questioning 
told police it was Smollett who orchestrated the alleged attack himself. Smollett maintains he was assaulted by two men who doused him with bleach and put a rope around his neck amid racist and homophobic slurs. He said, this MAGA country punches me right in the face. Now sources say these Nigerian brothers told detectives Smollett directed them to buy the rope at this hardware store and reportedly even rehearsed the assault ahead of time. Ola and Abel Osendairo were captured on surveillance video around the time Smollett said he was attacked. We'll have that conversation. Ola Osendairo is connected to Smollett through Empire, where he played a prisoner in season two. Police originally described the brothers as potential suspects. They interviewed them and searched their apartment, but released them Friday without charges. Shortly thereafter, police said the trajectory of their investigation had shifted. Innocence prevailed, all right? My guys are walking home. They're not charged. They are not suspects in this case. Regarding Smollett's alleged involvement with his attackers, his attorneys say nothing is further from the truth. But after these latest developments, all the actor's earlier statements about his attackers are being re-evaluated. If I had said it was a Muslim or a Mexican or someone black, I feel like the doubters would have supported me a lot much more, a lot more. And that says a lot about the place that we are in our country right now. The Chicago police initially assigned 12 detectives to this case because they believed that it could possibly be a hate crime. For now, Smollett's attorneys say he will continue to cooperate, but it's unclear when. What is clear is that if it is found that Smollett filed a false police report, he could face felony charges. As you guys just saw that news clip. So like I said, the situation is really serious. And, you know, these brothers, they have not been granted immunity. We talked about that yesterday. So if more stuff comes out that these brothers had something to do with that letter, they may face prosecution for that as well. Another thing I'm really curious to um, know that nobody's talking about anymore is what happened to the neighbor. So now if you guys remember back on January 31st, a neighbor came out. And if you remember, Jesse was almost using this neighbor as his proof. So the neighbor who lives in Jesse Smollett's um, Chicago apartment building, she saw a suspicious man pacing about before the attack on the actor. The unidentified woman told TMZ that she was out walking her dog at 12.30 a.m. Tuesday when she noticed a man near the building parking garage entrance. She described him as a scuffy white man wearing a blue winter hat, a blue zip-up sweater with a hood, and jeans with gray hunting socks exposed. She also said that the man was wearing camel-colored dress shoes, but the woman's sighting goes further. She also noted an item, possibly a rope, hanging from the bottom of his jacket, she said. She also observed another man who was making contact with the first, standing near the entrance. She quickly retreated back into her apartment. The next morning, she learned that her neighbor, Smollett, had been attacked. She soon contacted the police to offer details about what she saw. Despite being verbally and physically attacked by two men and being doused with the chemical substance, Smollett is not going into hiding. He will travel to Los Angeles to perform on Saturday as scheduled. So that was a story from back on January 31st. And since then, we have not heard anything from this neighbor. So my thought is this, either the neighbor is lying or possibly Jesse paid her to lie. But I think being that they're investigating everyone tied to this case, they also need to investigate the neighbor because if she was paid to lie or she told this lie to throw authorities off, then she also should be questioned as well. So I find that really funny that nobody has heard back from this neighbor at all. But I remember when she first came out, people were using that as a smoking gun. And now everything's coming out showing that it was a lie. So now after all of this, TMZ is reporting that Jussie's character, the character of Jamal Lyons, has now officially been written out of Empire. And this is what they're saying. They're saying that Jussie Smollett's Empire screen time is getting slashed in the wake of growing sediment that he staged a so-called attack. Production sources tell TMZ Jesse was supposed to have nine scenes and a big musical number in the second to last episode, which is being shot now. But five of his scenes have been cut and his musical number has been 86th. 
As the remaining four, as for the remaining four scenes, we're told that he's no longer the focus. The scenes feature an ensemble, meaning he's flanked by a number of cast members. With his duties parred down, Jesse will be spending way less time on set. Instead of working every day this week, we're told Jesse's working Friday and possibly Thursday, and he won't be rehearsing. Less work for Jesse means more work for writers who are busy making edits in the past 24 hours. We're told that the script has undergone multiple revisions. We broke the story that Jesse's case is heading to the grand jury as early as Tuesday. Our law enforcement sources say that the focus is presenting evidence that could lead to a felony indictment against Jesse for allegedly filing a false police report. So this situation is very serious. They are looking at charging him with a felony, meaning that if he's found guilty, he would definitely be looking at some prison time. So like I said, this entire situation is just getting crazier and crazier by the day as more information is coming out. Even earlier today, the brothers were saying that not only did Jesse pay them to do the attack, they also rehearsed it in that same area. Fox 32 News has learned that the two brothers who were arrested, detained, questioned, and then released by police, not only did they say that the incident was staged, they told detectives that the incident was rehearsed before they carried it out. Also, they told detectives that they were paid as much as $3,500 to do it. Now, we recently obtained an itemized list of what exactly was taken from the brothers' home by detectives as evidence, and this included a red hat, several containers of bleach, a receipt, which officers tell us was for the rope that was purchased and put around Smollett's neck, and a magazine that was similar to the one that was used to cut out letters for the hate mail that was sent to Smollett at the Empire stage. Also, regarding reports of Chicago PD sending the case to a grand jury, a PD spokesman tells me that is quote, certainly possible, but way too premature. Investigators say they would only resort to that if Smollett refuses to come in voluntarily for questioning. Now, Smollett's lawyers released a statement saying that they are cooperating with police, but officers tell me they have been given no indication that Smollett will be coming in anytime soon. Smollett has also hired a Chicago-based crisis management team who I spoke to today, Ann Cavanaugh, telling me they don't plan to have Smollett come in and talk to police right now, but that could change. Smollett, on the other hand, saying he has been further victimized by all of the false rumors around his assault. So it's going to be very interesting to see how all of this plays out. But in the meantime, when I tell you the internet is dragging him, they're cranking out the memes, they're cranking out the gifts. And, you know, to all of y'all who are trying to get offended and say, oh, this is not funny, you know, people are taking it too far. I find it very funny that because it's Jussie and he's a part of the LGBT, all of a sudden it's not okay to make him a meme. But anybody else is fair game. Where are all these tears when anybody else has done anything stupid and they've been memed and roasted? That's what the internet does. If you do something goofy, if you end up going viral, the internet is going to meme you. They're going to go in, they're going to have jokes, and what he did was not funny, you know what I'm saying? So he deserves to be memed and clowned. But this entire situation is just crazy, but I'm definitely going to keep you guys up to date as more information comes in via YouTube and Instagram. So I'll talk to you guys later. Y'all have a good day. Deuces. And then I heard Empire. So I turned around and I said, the Did you just say to me? I mean, I see the uh, attacker uh, masked. And he said, This MAGA country punches me right in the face. So I punched his ass back. And then um, we started tussling. You know, it was very icy. And we ended up tussling by the stage. Right. And above all, I fought the fuck back. I'm the gang Tupac. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, you don't get Because any sissy that's out in Chicago at 2 a.m. in the morning is trying to suck dick and not trying to get a motherfucking sandwich.